Hey everyone, Matt here with Night Run Studio, and in this cutscene tutorial, we're looking at how to make the camera zoom in on a target. This will work with Cinemachine as well as with both orthographic and perspective cameras. Let's get started. Now, while the cutscene element videos are meant to be standalone, they do rely on the very first video where we set up the cutscene handler and initiator. Now we're going to look at how to do this for three different camera types. If you're using a orthographic camera, we're going to be changing the orthographic size. If you're using a perspective camera, we'll change the field of view. And finally, for Cinemachine, we will also be working with the field of view. Now with that said, we're ready to get started. So let's create a new C Sharp script. We're going to call this one cutscene event underscore camera zoom. So let's start by getting rid of the start and update methods as we won't need those. And we're going to add in a public override void called execute, which you'll remember we set up in the first video. It won't like this for the moment, and that's just because this is not going to be a mono behavior. Rather, it's going to inherit from our cutscene element base script, where the execute method is set up. To do anything with our camera, we will of course need a reference to that camera. So let's make a private camera called cam. Here we'll say that camera is equal to cutscene handler dot cam. And if you didn't do the panning camera one, what we just need to do to make this work is head over to the cutscene handler. Or we just need to make sure that we have a public camera reference as we're going to keep all variables together in one place in the handler. Then in your element base script, you just need to make sure that the cutscene handler reference is a public one. All right, now that we can get our camera, we've got some variables to create, and this is how we're going to customize our camera. We'll make a number of serialized fields here. The first will be a private float called target size. We'll also have a serialized field. This one's going to be a private transform called target. For example, the NPC you want to zoom in on. And lastly, we need another serialized private field. This one will be a vector three, and we'll call this one offset, which just allows us to zoom in on an object, but also go a little higher to the side, depending on how we want to frame the camera. Just to show you what that's doing, we can now click on our cutscene base element, add our CSE underscore camera zoom, and now we could put in some of this information. For example, I want to zoom in on Martin, my NPC. My camera's orthographic size is currently six, and so I'm gonna go all the way down to two in order to get a really nice zoom effect. Just to show you how the offset works, let's give it a slight Y offset, so it'll go just a little high on the character. And finally, I'm gonna make this happen over two seconds, which is a pretty slow zoom, but it'll work well for demonstration. Now with all that setup done, we're ready to actually make this camera zoom. So we're gonna create a coroutine here, a private IE enumerator called zoom camera. We'll need to call that coroutine, so immediately after finding our camera, we'll say start coroutine zoom camera. Now we're going to declare some local variables here. So first off, we need to know our original position, which will just be equal to the camera's transform dot position. We'll also need to know where we're zooming to. This will be our target position, and it's just going to be equal to our target dot position, in this case, our NPC. And we're just going to add the offset so that it calculates the two together. All right, now that we've dealt with the position of the camera, we need to actually get the zooming happening. So let's make a float called original size. And this will just be equal to our camera's orthographic size. At this point, we need a couple of time variables so we know how quickly to do this zoom. So we'll make a float called start time. We also need to know our elapsed time, which always has to be reset to zero at the start of a zoom. Now, as long as our elapsed time is less than our duration, in my case, two seconds, we're gonna run a loop that continuously zooms the camera toward its target. Now for this, we do need a float called T. This is just our step, so it keeps track of how far into the zoom we are. With all that done, we can now move both the position of the camera and its zoom toward the target. So let's start with the zoom. We'll go camera.orthographic size is equal to, here we'll use the math function lerp, and we're just gonna go from our original size to our target size based on what step of the zoom we are currently at. Next, we'll set the position of the camera. So we just wanna make sure that that is always equal to vector3.lerp from our original position to our target position. And again, we just wanna move based on what step we are currently at. Now, each time we run through this loop, we need to make sure that our elapsed time is updated and it's just gonna be equal to time minus start time. So if we're 32 seconds into the game, but we started at 30, it'll know that two seconds have elapsed. At this point, we're going to return null all this does is make it so it satisfies the requirement of the coroutine to return something, and it waits till the end of the frame before continuing the loop. At this point, we're just gonna make two quick adjustments. Anytime you're lerping, there's room for just fractional errors in not quite reaching the target. So we just wanna make sure that our camera's orthographic size is actually equal to its target size. 
and also that our camera's position is equal to our target position. Now over in the cutscene handler, we have this play next element, which advances our cutscene to whatever's supposed to happen next. And so we're just gonna call that now. Now at this point, our zoom is fully running. However, we want to write good code and not just functional code here. So one last piece of cleanup is we're just gonna add a private void on destroy method. And all we wanna do is make sure to stop this coroutine as we don't want things running and artifacts of coroutines happening in the background as that can cause performance issues. Now in Unity, we can click on our cutscene base, open up the handler and make sure that we put in our camera reference. Don't worry about the VCAM yet, we'll get to that in a moment. Now there's gonna be one little error at this point. You'll notice that the zoom starts off okay, but something goes haywire. And what's happening here is because we've set our camera to go to the NPC's position, it's literally going inside of him, which is not what we want. Now we can fix this quite easily by just going to our offset. So we just wanna make sure that our offset maintains that minus 10 so that we don't get trapped inside of him. With that done, things are working much nicer and we've got a nice smooth zoom. It's a little high, but remember that's because we gave it a slight offset. All right, let's just look at how to do this now for a perspective camera. Keeping in mind that perspective camera uses field of view instead of orthographic size. So let's make that happen. So this change is very easy. We're just gonna click on our target size. I'm gonna command R or control if you're on PC and type in target FOV. That'll change all our field of views throughout this. And then finally, we just need to go through and anywhere we're actually referencing the orthographic size of the camera, we need to change it to field of view. I believe there's just those three. We will need to reset our reference as it's now field of view. I'm gonna make mine 20. And this time let's just go down a little below the NPC instead of above it. All right, that's working quite nicely. We've got a good perspective-based zoom. All right, finally, let's just show how to set this up for Cinemachine. And we need to start off in the cutscene handler where we need to add a using Cinemachine line up to the namespaces and also make sure we have a reference to a public Cinemachine virtual camera called VCAM. Now in the camera zoom element, we've just got a little bit of work to do. We'll add the namespace for Cinemachine. Make sure to change our camera reference to a Cinemachine virtual camera. And then just make sure that every camera reference gets turned into a V cam reference. And yes, I could have done that with command R, but I got carried away. Next, we wanna make sure that we are actually getting the virtual camera in our execute method. And now let's deal with this size issue as we're no longer using orthographic size, we are using field of view. So target FOV, I used command R here to do all three of them at once. And now we can't directly get the field of view of a Cinemachine camera, so what we actually need to do is type m underscore lens dot field of view with a capital F. This will allow us to get the field of view component. I'm just gonna copy that part here and then go down below and replace the field of view with that. Now that will mostly do the trick, except that my Cinemachine camera is still set to follow Willard. And so if I play the game now, my script and follow are actually going to be at odds with each other fighting for control of the camera. Obviously that's not what we want. And so in our execute method, before we start zooming, but after we get our camera reference, we're just gonna say vcam.follow equals null, which will just get rid of our player in the follow box. And that's how to zoom in your camera for all three camera types. I hope you found this one helpful. If you have, please be sure to like, subscribe, or just leave me a comment below. Especially if you are interested in letting me know what sort of cutscene elements you'd like to see in the series. Hope to see you in the next video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.